yes, we, we can look at the development of African countries and also many other developing countries out there in the world through the lens of what we call the flying geese model. The flying geese model was talked about several years ago by a Japanese expert called Kaname Akamatsu. And Kaname Akamatsu suggested that if you see the flying formation of birds, the geese, one is in the lead and then the rest follow in a particular order. Although there is a different um, way to look at this from biological point of view, it does have some relevance to economic development as well. Think for example about why Japan developed and then followed by Taiwan, followed by Vietnam, um, South Korea in that particular order. In what specific order did this development take place? Well, Japan started and then followed by the other countries in that order. So, can we today say that in a particular region, take for example in Africa or South, uh, uh, South Asia or South America, is there a specific country or nation that can take the lead, follow the footsteps of Japan, such that the rest of the countries can follow in the same order. It's not necessarily looking at the whole idea as if if one country becomes successful, then all the other countries that follow in the same geese formation are going to be successful. But it's also about what industries the countries are um, becoming successful in. So if you look at Japan, they were very successful in electronic industry, the car manufacturing, uh, then, now, today, we see that countries such as Vietnam, uh, South Korea are following the same footsteps. So, can we find the geese in Africa? Can we find the lead geese in Africa? The one that is taking the lead? A lot of people believe that Nigeria could be that country. A lot of people believe that South Africa could also be that country. That takes the lead so that Kenya, Uganda, um, Ghana can follow. But uh, it's taken a long time for these countries to uh, follow the footsteps of Japan to create some uh, lessons for the rest of the countries to follow. I am very, very satisfied with the development in Rwanda. If ever you travel to Rwanda, you can see that the leadership there is very strong. Therefore, they have achieved a lot of success over the past 10 years. For example, environmental sustainability. Environmental sustainability in Rwanda is the foremost priority of the government, such that the whole community is tasked to get out on the last Saturday of the month to clean the country. And people do this with no complaint. Can that happen in Nigeria? Or will the population fight back to say that, oh, well, I'm busy doing my own activity, therefore, although the government has asked that you do this general cleaning, you're not likely to find yourself participating in it. Um, the other aspect of the flying geese model is what are the lead industries in your country and what are the supporting industries? So if you have a strong leading uh, industry, then the rest of the uh, sectors can have some linkage with this industry which will provide very meaningful development for the country. In my book, one of the ways I illustrate this is to say that if you have a core activity and you have peripheral activities and they are linked together, that provides much more development. Take for example, if the government of Ghana can create a very successful uh, apparel industry, I'm talking of clothing industry, then that will itself support the cotton growers. The agricultural industry is going to be much more able to provide resources to support the apparel industry. The fertilizer producers will also be able to provide support to the cotton farmers. The fertilizer companies will also get their inputs from another industry. So you have a linkage that overall on the aggregate is going to provide development to the country. But unless that is done, and if industries are looked at in isolation, then you're not going to have that integration that is going to propel the country forward. Look at the Japanese car industry. 
It's linked to the electronic industry because now we have touch screen in our cars. It's also linked to audio, visual, uh, equipment linked to GPS. So the same kind of things have to be done more and more in Africa. I'm not saying this isn't done, but the volume uh, has to increase much more than it is right now. I'm passionate about development of developing countries. I'm passionate specifically about the development of sub-Saharan African countries. And if there is any way we can have the conversation to ensure that we don't lose any more time, that we are on track to becoming, uh, uh, or the African countries are on track to becoming emerging countries and potentially middle-income countries, that would be a great goal uh, for everyone to be proud of in terms of its achievement. Thank you.